Okay, good morning once again. I'm back and I'll be discussing on how to form the differential equation by elimination of arbitrary constants no? from a given relation. Okay? So, to obtain a differential equation that is consistent with the original relation involving arbitrary constant, the new relation will be free from arbitrary constant by elimination. So, these are the different characteristics of the DE. So, <coughs> its order is equal to the number of arbitrary constant in a given relation. Then, number two, it is free from arbitrary constant and it must be consistent with that relation. Okay? So, we are given a DE whose solution is y equal to c sub 1 exponential of minus 3x plus c sub 2 exponential x. No? Now, there are two constants involved in the solution. So, first, you have to determine what are the number or what is the number of arbitrary constants no? or what are the arbitrary constant involved in the solution. So, differentiate the function twice because we have c sub 1 and c sub 2 present in your equation. So, the hack arbitrary constant Kaduha sa ga mag-differentiate. Again, we have a formula in differentiating an exponential function that we have to follow. So, from the given function, okay, or solution, so I can have my first derivative, okay. So, again, applying the formula, c sub 1 exponential u, my u is minus 3x, derivative of which is minus 3, plus c sub 2 exponential x, derivative of x is 1. So, the same term, no? Okay, so minus 3, c sub 1, exponential minus 3x plus c sub 2, exponential x as my second equation. I take my, the given as my first equation, I take the first derivative as my second equation. So, I still need the second derivative. Okay, then I have the minus 3, c sub 1 as my constant factor then I can have the exponential of minus 3x times a negative 3. Derivative of minus 3x. No? So, plus is of 2. Product of constant, we have 9. C sub 1, exponential of minus 3x plus C sub 2, exponential x. So, equation 1, 2, and 3. Now, after differentiating thrice, no? still we notice that all the arbitrary constants are still there. So, that's the time you have to look for a process of elimination to remove all this constant. Okay, so collecting the equations form. No? So, I have in mind to eliminate the constant C sub 1 and C sub 2. If I'm going to pair maybe the two equations to eliminate my C sub 2. C sub 2 is easy to eliminate because, okay, the term are exactly the same in all equations. So, if you subtract, no? equation 1, maybe 2, no? So, equation 1 subtracted with equation 2, producing a new equation 4. And equation 1 subtracted by 3, okay, producing an equation 5. So, this is the result. Equation 1 minus, uh, plus equation 2, no? Plus minus. Subtracted, no? Okay, so minus. So, it is y minus y prime. This is eliminated. So, you can eliminate your c sub 2, but I have the c sub 1 left. So, y minus y prime equal to 4 c sub 1. Okay, so that's the equation. Is that correct? Okay. y minus, because you are subtracting 1 with 2. So, y minus y prime, and we have the c sub 1 term, which is 4 c sub 1 exponential minus 3x. Now, if you also have to subtract equation 1 by equation 3, so it should be y minus y double prime. And then, when you subtract this one, so, my at uh, 1 c sub 1 or c sub 1 minus 9 c sub 1 becomes minus 8 c sub 1 exponential 3x minus 3x, correct? So, I have new equation 4 and 5 wherein there is a presence of c sub 1. So, I can further eliminate my c sub 1 but the constant coefficient are different, correct? But I can easily make the coefficient the same or opposite to each other. By multiplying with the LC, uh, with a factor. Now, I want the mul least common multiple between 4 and 8 is 8, correct? So, I need to multiply this by 2 
to make it equal to it. So equation number four, I have to modify. So equation number four will be multiplied by two and can be added to equation number five. Okay, what is the effect or the result when equation number four is multiplied by two? I have two y minus two y prime. Okay, and that's equal to eight six of one exponential minus three x. Okay, my equation number five because my purpose is to eliminate my six of one. Okay, so by adding the two, so we did not make eliminated. Okay, so this is the result. Your y term, if you add two y with y is three y. There is no other y prime term, so I can just collect the minus two y prime. This is also y double prime term, na? Okay, so just collect. Okay, so this is ah, so that's equal to zero. I can maybe rearrange them. Maybe I can write the highest order derivative term. So y double prime, no? To start with the positive term, no? As if I can get transpose there, or as if I can get multiply by minus one. And this is the effect. Y double prime. This is plus, and this becomes minus. Equated to zero. So that's how to eliminate, no? The arbitrary constant. In example number one, okay. Now I have another example, okay. So this is written implicitly, okay. Now if you have to identify, now we are now solving, eh? If you have to look on the solution and identify the arbitrary constant, so the arbitrary constant here is a. It is appearing twice, but still it is a. So the number of arbitrary constant is only one. So you can differentiate the function once by implicit differentiation. When you apply implicit differentiation, that would mean that you have to differentiate each term with respect to x. Okay. So differentiating the first term under a power rule. Okay, that's very ah very familiar power rule. Okay, so you have your exponent to as a factor, reducing the power of your u to one. The derivative of x with respect to x is one constant becomes zero. So this is two y. This is involving y. So there must be y prime to appear in your second term. So two y y prime. This is zero because it is a constant term, an isolated constant term. So if you differentiate a constant, provided it is not paired or expressed as a factor to any variable, so it will become zero directly. To simplify, I can divide. I divide with two. Okay, so this is x minus a for the first term. Removing to in the second term, I can solve for a. Now, so my a is left there. So this cannot be an answer yet because after differentiating once, the arbitrary constant is still present in this equation. So if I'm going to solve for a, so my a is now defined as x plus y y prime. Now this a can be substituted back to the solution. Okay. So eliminate a, so I can substitute back this to the solution. This is the solution. So x minus a, my a s. Okay, so we have the three terms, two terms expression. Okay, so plus the y prime, and this is again a. So I can combine terms, removing this inner grouping or a parenthesis preceded with a negative. There is plus x and minus x. So x is out. This is a minus term. But if you take the square, so that term becomes positive. Okay, on the right side, I can apply binomial expansion. So my left-hand member is the square of the product of y y prime, which is kini. This is plus y squared, and this is now the expanded form of my binomial square x squared plus the product of this two. So two x y y prime plus again we have the square of the product of y y prime. Okay, but these two are common on both sides of the equation, so we can. Eliminate them. So what is left? There is there are terms with no derivative. I may group them. Okay, like we have x squared minus y squared, and this is the term involving the derivative. So okay, so ako na lang ibutang to the left, or I can maybe transfer that on the other side or the right. Then ako transfer to the left. So x squared minus y squared plus. So kana mo yung light derivative. Then the second term is the one involving the derivative. So being free from a derivative, okay, and the order of this is equal to one. So the consistency of this answer can be verified if you have to pair them as an equation, and then you have to verify whether it is 
satisfying the equation or not. No? So, kung ma-satisfied ni siya, meaning it is consistent. Now, just like with what we did before, no? wherein pwede ni mo i-pair ang solution o ang DE. No? And then you have to check if that is satisfied, then that is actually having consistency of your answer. Okay? So, anyway, that's the answer. No? So, the two characteristics are obviously seen there. Okay? Now, if this is classified according to order and degree, so the order of this is 1. The degree is also 1. Now, usually, if the D is in first order, first degree, okay, so it can also be written in a differential form. Okay, we group the terms with no derivative, so the Y prime is the dy dx, correct, if you recall. So, if you remove, because this is a ratio of differential and dy dx, so if you multiply with the dx to remove the dx as if it is acting as a fraction, so my first term is the one that contains the dx plus the term involving the dy equated to zero. So you can also present your answer as this. That is why ganina, I'd mention if you group terms with no derivative because the terms with no derivative is the one that is multiplied with the differential of the other variable. Okay, so this can now be an answer. It follows what is called as the uh, general form of a first order first degree DA, wherein you can have the first term, the DX term, with the coefficient now, which is involving XY, and the second term is N with, okay, so we have the XY equal to 0. So that is how you rearrange the term if you have to write your first order first degree DA in a general form. Okay. Another approach to solve is by it means yon ganina that if a constant exists as a term not associated with a variable, maybe as a factor, then that constant can be eliminated through differentiation, knowing that the derivative of a constant is zero. So konsiyang usa na buwag siya when you differentiate that constant then that constant is becoming zero as if it is being eliminated. Okay? Okay, given. So there's only one arbitrary constant, A. So before you differentiate, it, no? so try to work isolating your A. Okay, so I'm expanding my binomial here. Okay, under a perfect square binomial. Then we have the Y squared and we have the A squared. Okay? So, A squared is common on both sides of the equation, so that's out. So, this is the term involving A. So, if I'm going to bring, uh, bring this to the right side, so, X squared plus Y squared is equal to 2EX, correct? Okay. So, if you have to isolate your A, so, one option there is to divide with on 2X every term, no? But, this 2, if I were you, do not associate your 2 with X. Because it will only complicate the process of differentiation later. Instead, the product of 2A remains to be a constant. So, have your 2 be associated as a factor with the arbitrary. So, instead of isolating only A, so you can include your 2 together with A. So, isolate your 2A. So, which means you have to divide with X. Okay, so dividing both sides by X x squared plus y squared over x, divide with x, okay? Here you have an x, so, so akong gidivide every term by x because before you apply the quotient rule of differentiation, okay, so it would be easier if your ratio is just y squared over x, then you have a numerator which is composed of two terms. So, if you divide x squared by x, this becomes x. Then the second term is just a y squared over x. So this is simpler than having this as the original ratio be considered. Okay? Now, under implicit differentiation, we can differentiate each term with respect to x. So, differentiating 2a as a constant, then that becomes 0. So, there is a term involving ratio. So, I can also apply the quotient rule of differentiation. Derivative of 2a becomes 0. So, you are already eliminating your a. And the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Applying your quotient rule, Okay, are you following? X squared. X squared. The derivative of Y squared is 2Y, Y prime. Minus Y squared times 1. The derivative of X. Okay? So, to remove your denominator X squared, okay, you multiply by X squared every term. Correct? 
Okay, so multiplying with x squared. Okay, so that is what's that? X squared plus the 2xy minus y squared. These are the terms with no derivative. I group them and preparation of writing my equation in a differential form. 2xy, y prime is a dy dx. So I can have my dx so multiplied with a third with a term with no derivative. So the quantity of x squared minus y squared is now multiplied with a dx, and I have my second term involving the dy equated to zero. So you were able to arrive with the same answer now under a different approach. Okay? So another case. No? Okay, just to show you that we will be working also with other functions. No? Now the problem is indicating here that the W or maybe omega no? is a parameter not to be eliminated. So it is a constant. So it is a parameter not to be eliminated. So it's not arbitrary on this case. No? So we have W. So we will be eliminating A and B in the solution. That means A and B are the arbitrary constants. Okay? So W is a parameter not to be eliminated. So if the literal symbol here, A, B, and W are constant, then other letter like x and t are actually variables. But x is dependent with function t. Uh, is dependent with t. So, ang ato ding x maoy dependent. Ang ato t maoy independent. So, you have to differentiate x with respect to t how many times? Because we have two arbitrary constant. So, you have to differentiate twice. Okay? So, the order of your derivative here must be two. Okay, so again, we have to recall the role in differentiation involving cosine and maybe sine to recall. What is the derivative of a cosine u? It is a negative sine u d u dx, correct? And if a sine u is differentiated also, then it is a cosine u d u dx, okay? Differentiate your x with respect to t. A is a constant factor. I'll be differentiating my cosine function and entirely this is u in the formula. So, minus sine u. Differentiating your u with respect to t. W is a constant. The derivative of t is with respect to t is 1. So, in your first term, there is a w left. Isolated term, constant term b. So, that becomes z. That becomes 0. Okay? So, we have minus w a. Then, sine of w t plus b. Then, close. Okay? Now, ako ang close parenthesis. Second time, I have to differentiate. My new constant is the minus a, w a. Okay, so when you differentiate a sine function, you can have the cosine of the same u, which is skinny. Then I have a derivative of this function, which is w. So w squared a with the cosine of w t plus b. Okay, now, I have... A and B still present in my second order derivative of function. So I have to find way on how to remove my A and B. Now, if we notice, no? this A and cosine of a function WT plus B is exactly the same as the given, which is X. So if this is replaced with X entirely, then you are actually eliminating this the presence of the arbitrary constant. So, the d squared x dt squared can be equal to minus w squared times x. Okay? So, pwede rin ako tawagun o minus w squared times x. And if I'm going to transpose this because it's a negative to make it plus, so we have d, t, uh, d squared x dt squared plus w squared x equal to 0. Now, you notice the arbitrary constant still uh, is out in the resulting answer. But your W being a parameter not to be eliminated, so that is still present in your differential equation. Okay, so that's the last example on how to formulate a differential equation through elimination of arbitrary constant. Okay, so thank you for watching and until the next video. Okay, so bye-bye. Okay, thank you for watching.